I want to take a look at working with strings here. So first of all, we want to look at the structure of strings a little more closely. So far we've just looked at them as a string of characters and quote marks. But actually, um, each character in a string has a position, uh, which is a number, which is called an index. And the um, indexes start with number one for the first character of the string and go up one by one. So here's an example. My string says this is a string. And you'll notice that every character has a position, including the blanks and the punctuation. So that's how the position numbers work. OK. Now, there are a bunch of string functions in VBA that you can use to manipulate strings. And um, if you go to the Formulas tab and click the text icon, you can see a list of those. What, what I want to do, um, I don't want to go through, you know, function by function and be like a talking manual. So I thought instead what i do is, is an interesting example so you can see how these work. So I have a macro, um, I have a workbook called Parse Names. And I have it here. Um, I'll just enable the content. And here I have some names. And what I want to do is break these up into first name and last name, or in this case, three names, uh, depending on where the blanks are. So just to show you what it does, this is my button, and here it is. So you can see this one got split up, this one, this one, this one, and this one got split up into its three constituent parts. OK. So how do we do this? Well, this is the code, but never mind this slide. We're going to look at it bit by bit. And let me over here also go over to the code. So I'll go to Developer and um, Visual Basic. And here's my subroutine. OK, so we're starting with some constants and variables. Ooh, sorry. Let me fix this. OK. Um, here I set up a constant named blank, which is a string with just one blank character in it. Now, why I do that is to make my code more readable. I think it's more readable to use the word blank than to use quote, blank, quote, where you can't see the blank. And it's a little hard to distinguish visually from an empty string, which is just two quote, quotes with nothing in between. OK, I also have a few other variables that I'm going to use, um, the input string and a variable I'm calling a word and then a few integers to help me remember string positions. So if you look at the um, structure here, uh, you can see that I've got a while loop as the main part of my code. It goes from here down to here. And what it's going to do is look at each row in, in this sheet um, until I get to a row where the first column is empty. So I'm looking, I'm starting with um, cell 1-1 one, one, and then cell 2-1 the next time and cell 3-1 the next time and so on. And the loop will keep going until I get to a row where the first um, column has nothing in it and then I'll stop. Okay, so that's what this does. Is empty is testing to see if um, the cell has nothing in it and that's how it knows to stop. And you can see my loop control here. I start with j equal 1, and I keep incrementing j until I find the empty row. OK, so now let's take a look at what's inside this loop. And um, the slides go along with this. I won't necessarily. So here I discuss the outer loop structure. And so now we want to look at the inner loop. Now I'm going to start um, putting my words as I find them uh, in, in the um, input string, which is what's in the first column. I'm going to start with column two and put words in column by column until I get to the end, until I've used them all up. So I'm going to keep peeling off words and putting them in the text box. Uh, oh, and where it says text box, it should really say um, spreadsheet. Sorry, 
adapted this from an old version. Okay, so what I'm doing now is um, I, I also read what, whatever was in column one, and that's my input string. So I start with k equals two, um, column k being where I want to put my first word that I find. So, okay, I, this loop is going to keep going while the input string is greater than zero, while the length is greater than zero. So here I'm using a function called len, which gives me the length of a string, how many characters are in it, and um, I'm just going to peel off words one at a time until I use up the whole string. Okay, so the first thing I do is find the position of the blank in the string. That's what this line does. And that number will be the index of the blank in, inside the string. So if there's no blank, it'll return a zero. So if it's bigger than zero, I know there's a blank. So that means there's at least two words in this string. If I do get a zero, then I'm on the last word because there's no more blanks. So I have two cases here. If the blank position is bigger than zero, so there is a blank, then I want to get the characters up to, but not including the blank. So to do that, I use a function called left, which gets the characters up to, but not including that position. So this says how many characters I want from the string. And I assign that substring, that left side of the string, which is my first word, to the variable a word. Then what I want to do is now get rid of that word and have the remainder of the string left. So to do that, I want to take the right part of the string, and this tells me how many characters I need. Um, the number of, uh, total number of characters in the string minus wherever the blank position was will give me the remaining number of characters that I need to get. I'll show you a detailed example in a minute here. Um, and then I trim it, which means I remove any leading or trailing blanks that might happen to be hanging around, um, just in case, you know, um, it was a little off somehow. And then on the last, so I'll keep doing this, getting a word off the left and trimming down the right side until I finally get down to where there is no, no more blank. And then what I'll do is my word is just the whole string. I set the string to be the empty string, and um, that's it. So in either case, when I finish this if, I've got a word. And the input string is what's ever left after I take that word off. Okay, so here, um, what I'm doing is in, in row J, which is the row I'm working on, cell K, which is the next cell available, so we started with two, I'm putting that word in there, and then I increase k to one more. So if it's two, then it's three. Um, and keep going and putting a word into each column until the string is empty. Okay, so again, looking at the Excel side, uh, you can see that here I, I needed, I had two words, two words, two words, and here I had three, so my loop went one extra time to get the atoms. Okay, so um, these slides give you a little more uh, details about these functions, left, right, and trim. And here's my example. So look, let's look at James Monroe. That's a string with 12 characters, including the blank. The blank position here, the result of this um, in-string function, will be 6. Okay, so to get the word James, I want to go from the beginning, so taking starting at the left, using function left, and go up to position 5. So that's wherever the blank was, minus 1. And now this will be the word James. Okay, now um, what I want to do with right is take my input string and get however many characters I need from the right side of the string to be the remainder of the string. Uh, minus the blank. So, okay, the blank was at position 6. So you can see, looking at the example here, if I take 12 minus 6, I'm going to get the rest of my string. And um, so that's the formula I use here. 
whatever the length of the string is minus the blank position which is where remember where the first blank was um, which helped us get the first word off the string uh, you should play around with this a little you might want to write out the John Quincy Adams example or actually run um, step through the function with that so you can see exactly what's happening and what numbers it's getting I have to say writing this kind of code is a little bit fiddly what I usually do is is write down an example like my James Monroe one number all the numbers figure out exactly what to do and um, what the numbers should be and then test it and um, you know if it doesn't work then you adjust it a little bit sometimes you need a plus or minus one to make things come out right uh, finally it's always helpful to trim strings before you do anything else with them so you get rid of any leading or trailing blanks that might be there confusing things all right so play around with this and um, this gives you a start at least in using the string functions